Good morning, everybody. It is, is it Thursday today? I don't, I don't really even know. <laughs> so it's Thursday today, and we give thanks to God for another day of life, and let's begin our devotion. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. So morning prayer begins with, let's do the, the second one. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Amen. So it recommends Psalm 63. I haven't done this before, but let's look at Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I will remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Well, when I was reading this just now, I thought it was kind of, I'm a, you know, upper Midwestern Scandinavian. So the thought of lifting up my hands in praise to God is kind of frightening. We don't move or wiggle. You just kind of, you know, if this would be swaying, not, not the, and I, there's people who that is how they praise God and I'm thankful for them. But for me, that kind of movement in the sanctuary is, is um, frightening. But just the um, earnesting, earnestly seeking God and thirsting for God in this parched land and being satisfied by God. Um, and then the whole, the whole piece that we see in other Psalms as well of God being the one who watches us at night and helps us. And then that, that last verse eight, I cling to you, your right hand upholds me. So it's a mutual relationship there. We cling to God, but it's God's hand that sustains us in it all. Give glory to our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship and praise. So for our, well, we did one word today, but for my, for my resiliency texts, I thought we could look at, let's see, so, let's do Luke. Luke. Chapter 17. Oh, this is one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite texts in scripture. It's Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. When Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, saw, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one has returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. 
What I love about this text, and it's interesting now when you think leprosy or now coronavirus is kind of our, our self-ostracizing and quarantining situation, but the miracle of this text for me has always been that Jesus saw them because the lepers of the society were the ones that had been pushed out outside of the walls where nobody needed to see them or deal with them or, and they were, um, they were no longer part of the community. And Jesus saw those who others didn't want to see. And that is, that's how our God is, seeing us when others don't want to see us, seeing us when we don't want to see ourselves, seeing the ones on the fringes of society that could fall through the cracks. And yet Jesus sees them and he heals them. He brings them a word. And it, I mean, it's curious that only one comes back and says, thank you. Um, and I kind of wonder when you look at the cycles of grief and the, the sixth one they're adding um, from the classic five stages of grief, they're adding the one of finding meaning. And I'm curious uh, on the other side of this, however long the other side of this will be for us, how many of us will be able to um, find moments of thanks and gratitude? Not that we're glad we had this happen, but we're that we've found meaning and purpose and understanding of life in a new way in the midst of this quarantine. So that's something that I to think about as we are kind of the lepers right now, <laughs> all of us. We are um, flung to the corners of our houses and away from one another. And yet it's different than this text because we still have community. We have to be a little bit more intentional than before about creating it, but there still is a way, like gathering here, um, calling, our, calling people we love. The miracles of technology um, are creating a community so that our leprosy, our quarantining, does not feel so defining to who we are. And I'm not saying that everybody is there. We all are handling our grief in this in a very different way. And honoring that and walking with each other however we're handling our grief and our um, separation and our distance is one another way that god is with us so as god says rise and go your faith has made us well that is our our command by christ today rise and go about your day your faith has made you well in christ jesus and then our devotion from my, the Sinner Saint devotional from 1517 is, we're got going on to day 15. We've really been doing this for over two weeks now. It's Tiny, Weak, and Cared For by Elise Fitzpatrick. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man and woman that you are mindful of them? And the son of man that you care for him? Psalm 8, 3 through 4. Okay, I have a confession to make. I am kind of an astronomy nerd. I love looking at pictures from the Hubble telescope. In fact, one time I took my grandson up to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena to see life-size models of the Voyager and the room where they, they built it. I've toured the... Palomar Observatory, that's almost Spanish, I'm sorry, Observatorio, <laughs> and joined in nighttime st stargazing parties in Sequoia National Park. And I also tune in every time SpaceX is scheduled to fire a rocket. I love the heavens. They shock and amaze me. And I admit that sometimes I wish I were an astrophysicist and could really explore the way I want to. But alas, I'm old and I hate math. So when I start thinking this way, I console myself by saying that I sh I'm sure that exploring the heavens is something I'll enjoy doing when I get to the new earth. Will there be nebulas there? I hope so. Perhaps one reason I find the heavens so fascinating is that I know and love their creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens, Genesis 1.1. I love those words and I'm amazed at God's power. All humankind combining all their power couldn't make one nebula, not even one. But here's how David described their creation. He called them the work of God's fingers. 
get that? The moon and all the stars and galaxy and all the worlds, all nebulas and black holes and planets that are billions of light years from Earth are all simply the work of his fingers. Just a couple of swipes with his ring finger and pinky. No big thing for him. Enormous horizons of universe after universe that we could never explore even if we had a thousand lifetimes were created by him as handmade sky jewelry mounted in their settings. Sky jewelry, think of that. The earth is the Lord's art project. He made it the way it is because he delights in beauty and there's no end to his creativity and power. David's words here are meant to make us feel our insignificance. We're tiny, we're weak. If his fingers created all the heavens, then in comparison to his power and enormity, we don't even amount to a grain of sand in the Sahara. And so David voices the most logical of questions. What is man and woman that you are mindful of them and the son of man that you care for him? To answer that question, we need to think back to the creation of earth. On the sixth day after he had bejeweled the heavens with stars and, and the earth with incalculable plants and animals, the Lord said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In his image, God created him. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. And he blessed them and saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Genesis 1, 28, 31. Why is God, God mindful of us? Why does he care for us? Simply because man, though infinitesimal, infinitesimal in comparison to the heavens, is his image bearer. He made us to be particularly like him in ways that sugarcane, grizzly bears, or Neptune aren't. And because we reflect him in this way, he keeps us in mind always. Humankind is the crown of all God created. So he cares for us as we might, as we might care for a beautiful painting we created and delight in. But that's not the only reason he, we fill his thoughts. Yes, he cares for us because we're created in his image, but he also cares for us because the second person of the Trinity, the Son, became one of us. He took to himself the blood, bone, and DNA, creations of God, of a little virgin girl, and his inca incarnation was forever elevated our race. Jesus is the image of a true God, but he is also a true man. By living in perfect loving obedience to the Father, Jesus truly fulfilled all that man had created, been created to be and has graciously credited us with that record. And because of that, when we put our trust in him, we can have complete assurance that God, who has numbered all the stars and gives to all of them their names, Psalm 147.4, knows our name and knows us so well that he can tell us how many hairs are on our head. Fear not, the perfect man says to us, you are the, of more value than and many sparrows, Luke 12.7, or stars or nebula or grizzlies. Don't be afraid. You're more than a speck of dust to him. You're his beloved and all know, powerful and knows you. He's all powerful and knows you intimately. And even so, he loves you. What are we that we, he is mindful and cares for us? We are his beloved. I kind of want to be a nebula. Wouldn't it be kind of fun if we could pick something in the universe today to be? I think maybe a nebula, maybe a black hole. Just kind of suck it all in. <laughs> and have that gravitational force towards us. Um, but you, when you look at Hubble Space um, Telescopes, it's just phenomenal, the beauty of the heavens. And what I've loved about living out here is I get to see stars at night. I have not seen stars at night in at least seven years. And then in Guatemala City, we didn't see them anyway. Um, so just when we went to the rural villages. So I don't remember since my childhood actually looking up and seeing the stars at night. And just to see the vastness of God's creation and how, even I mean, think about Neptune, think about poor little Pluto, wondering if it's a planet or not, because we decided whether we're gonna categorize it as such or not. Think about even the, the, the I'm, a, I'm a chemistry major, so think about our atoms and how you can, um, 
to have orbitals and electrons and protons and neutrons and all of that creates life as God puts carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and, and everything together. God is pretty phenomenal. And at one time we can feel like we are nothing to God. We are insignificant because in the vastness of all of this, who are we? And that might not be a bad question to ask sometimes and feel how small, how insignificant in some ways. But then the flip of that is how regarded we are how God loved us so much in all of the universe that God sent his son to us, to humanity, to redeem not just humanity, but all of creation, because our sin impacts all of creation. Um, we feel that all the time. And that as God knows the nebulas, God knows your DNA, and God knows your sins and your thoughts and your hopes and your prayers and your worries, and God is there restoring you, sustaining you, and being your God in the moment. Um, and that's not something we always see or feel. We always want to feel uh, God's presence, and that's not always how God works in our life. Sometimes what we have is God spoken, spoken into our lives because we don't feel it. I mean, I know our good Methodist brothers and sisters would say something else. I mean, they love the strange warming of the heart more than anything else. But, and there's a place for that. But the hearing of God's word and the dwelling of that and reading Psalm 8 and wondering at the majesty and also the intimacy of God is one of the gifts that we have as a people of faith. Our um, ordinary blessing today by Meta. Um, I've, I've decided that I'm going to dress for work because I, it makes me feel more alive and I'm, I'm not saying that's going to be every day. Sometimes I will be in my, my home pajamas <laughs> even when I'm doing this, but there's something of, there's a poem today for, for getting dressed and I, it's completely, well, I don't want you to turn your cameras on if you're not dressed, please don't do that. But if you have pajamas on or clothing on, turn on your camera or not. How we are adorned does not matter. But let's think about getting dressed as an everyday, ordinary blessing. They're just clothes, not molds. These fabrics and styles could never fold the fullness of your bright body and personhood into a simple size container. So tailor and hem or thrift knowing you are fearfully and wonderfully made for more than fitting in between packet pockets and seams. May you choose clothes that help you present yourself to world free of fear or shame, wrapping you in sturdy confidence and personal flair that celebrate whoever you wish to be on this particular day. And from Mr. Rogers, let's see what Mr. Rogers has to say to us. Things are different. Here's our, our picture today of things are different. You never know the story by the cover of the book. You can't tell what a dinner's like by simply looking at the cook. It's something everybody needs to know way down deep inside that things are often different than the way they look. When I put on a costume, to play a fancy part. That costume changes just my looks. It doesn't change my heart. You cannot know what someone's thinking by the picture you just took, because things are often different from the way they look. There's some wisdom in that, isn't there? So let us continue with our worship service. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of your risen Lord to make us new every day. We especially thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation for fields that are beginning to be plowed, for flowers that are pushing up through the dirt, 
and bringing new life and glory to our gardens and our, well, our feeds and Facebook even as we see flowers coming and blooming. We give you thanks for the work of your fingers in the universe, for the nebulas and the black holes. And we also thank you for the grizzly bears and the dolphins and the rose bushes and the rhododendrons and even that dirt. We thank you for your creation. We thank you that you regarded us and you created us in your own image. And in that same image, you redeemed us through your son. Thank you for your faithfulness and thank you for knowing every hair on our heads and every thought in our minds and feeling in our hearts. And thank you for loving us still and holding us close. We pray for the gifts of relationship with others, for the community of faith in your church, Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurt of all your children and bring about the peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Trump. We pray for those in Congress. We pray for the governors of all of our different states and presidents and rulers throughout the world. May they meet this crisis head on and faithfully care for those who have been entrusted into their care. We pray for the supply of ICU supplies and um, personal protection equipment for doctors and nurses and all those who work in hospitals. We pray for our supply of ventilators in this country so that no one loses their life for lack of a supply that can be found or made. May you spur those who can make gowns and gloves and masks and ventilators to do so for the good of those most vulnerable in our midst, which might also be us. We pray for our fear of our neighbors right now, for fear that being near them might take our life. We fear for so much these days, Lord, and we grieve for even more. Be in the midst of our grief. May we be gracious to ourselves and those around us as we confront loss of normal and change in what life is. And we await the next steps that we are to take, trusting in your mercy and your presence to guide us through. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you this day and all days ahead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.